at monitoring different areas or whatever. Um, these radios are unencrypted, so anybody that you know talks on these can be heard by anyone with a scanner. So keep that in mind. You don't want to reveal any sensitive information over these units. You never know who could be listening. Um, emergency communications, yes. These things are really useful in emergency communications. A lot of times in an emergency, cell phone networks I might be down entirely. Uh, they may actually be bogged down. If they're still up, they may be swamped with people trying to make phone calls, and that may result in failed uh, attempts at communicating. But with these, it uh, doesn't require a network to operate. As long as you are within range of one of the other receivers, you will be able to reach that person. And that's why I also say that you know, you've got the higher, uh, higher power mobile rigs. These are gonna go much further than these are, so uh, there's a lot of good use for this as far as organizing people in an emergency, for sure. Um, well, the main part of the question was about the NSA. Do they actually have a blanket uh, monitoring of every frequency that people can transmit on? I, I can't answer that question. Um, I don't know what the NSA has. And if you're worried about what the NSA is you know, possibly going to hear, then you shouldn't say those things on the radio, would be my recommendation. There's no, uh, if you can find radios with encryption, um, and if they're a cheap radio like this that has a feature like that, they're easily breakable. Um, even, you know, the, the Apple 25 system I was talking about with the police, if you pay for the expensive scanner, you can hear what they're saying too. So, it doesn't, to me it doesn't matter if the NSA is listening. I don't have anything, I'm not planning violence, I am not, you know, dealing drugs over a two-way radio, so all they're going to hear me is talking about where the police are and what the activists are doing, and I'm not really concerned about it. Yeah, no problem. Before we get uh, to you, were there anybody else who wanted to ask a question for the first time? Any first time questions? All right, feel free. Have I been asking too many lately? <laughs> oh no, you just came up once before. I just wanted to give other people okay. a chance to. to I've it. been at a lot of times and asking a lot of questions. <laughs> Go ahead. I was basically, you have answered it already, but where, what kind of encryptions are available for those handhelds? What exactly can you get? How does it work? Some of these uh, little handheld radios, the Valve Bank doesn't offer any encryption options at all. Uh, there are some like handheld units you can buy from Walmart. You know, you've probably seen the blister packs, as they're called, with the plastic wrapped around them. And they're really hard to cut into the paint. When you buy those radios, you're usually getting uh, FRS or GMRS radios. Those are the radio bands that the, the units operate on. Some of those units will have encryption. Uh, but it's a joke. I mean, if you've got one of the radios, you'll be able to listen to the other person. So anyone with that brand of radio would be able to de-encrypt the channel. Or, you know, you're only selecting between one and eight, you know, one and eight uh, possible encryption modes. So it's not hard to just randomly choose and find one that, that'll decode it. So the answer is no, there aren't really any uh, viable encryption options that I'm aware of, at least not at an affordable price. If you want to pay a lot of money for each handheld unit and try to get your own Motorola system, uh, you'd be safer, but there can still be people with the right equipment who can decode it. So to me, it's a futile um, sort of process to try to even bother with that. Just don't put it out there if you don't want it to be heard. So what he said was, would code words be simpler? I'm repeating for the cameras. Uh, would code words be simpler? Sure. I mean, if you have, if there's something you have to say, but you can't say it, then I suppose you could use code if that's something you wanted to do. But again, it's hard enough to just get people to carry the radios and have the radios. To get them to run a code system, you're going to be asking a lot of, uh, of other activists. So broadcast communications, two-way communications, they both work very, very well if you uh, put them to use. They'll make your activism movement all the stronger, uh, the better. I, I think that uh, the two ways are the most important thing for activists on the ground. And uh, Broadcast FM, of course, very helpful to reach out to people and connect them to the ideas of liberty. So again, I'm here. I've uh, got some level of expertise with these topics. Feel free to ask any questions you might have, even if you don't want to ask them in front of everyone. I'll be hanging out for a little bit here. Um, actually, I want to try to program some of these radios. 
give you a little bit more information about these. By default, they don't come with any programming in them, but there's a cable that you can use to connect to the radio via your USB port on your laptop, and you can flash memories into it. You can have a pre-programmed set of memory in entries and just flash it up to the radio. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do here as soon as I get off uh, the stage. I've been having some technical difficulties with that, but that's more of a problem, not with the radio, but a problem with the cable uh, that I have. So, any other questions? Yeah, come on up. Do it please. Just an extrapolation on the emergency broadcast system that I was asking about earlier. Obviously, you don't want to put all of the activities of the, the activists on FM, but say there was an event where you wanted to get the signal out to as many people as possible as to what was occurring at the moment. Is there a, pos is there a way to create an emergency broadcast system that would break into an existing program that's being transmitted from the two way? Okay, so I see what you're saying. The question is, let's say we've got a 24-hour radio station, it's operating. How could someone break into that with emergency communications? Something that needs to get out right Something now. urgent. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there may be ways to automate that if they would likely be fairly expensive and convoluted. Um, another way to do it would be to, you know, if you had your, if you had your transmitter and then you, you had an audio source, like what I told you earlier was this thing can provide a 24-hour feed, but it doesn't give you anything more than that. There's no ability to break in or do anything like that. But if you were to take this and then link it into a mixer, and then this thing's running all the time, and the mixer's got a microphone attached to it or some other source of audio attached to it, then if there was some kind of an emergency, you could physically turn down the feed turn up your microphone or turn up your computer or some other feed that has the, the scanner or whatever it is that you want. Um, there are ways to automate this, uh, but again, we're talking about some complicated measures. The, the easiest way would be to physically do it as a, as a human. Um, automation systems are expensive and how you would get the break-in factor, I don't know. There's probably some way of doing it. With FCC radio stations, they have what's called the NDEC. Uh, it's, it's an FCC-mandated piece of hardware that each station has to have. It monitors a certain frequency that's operated by another station when it detects the tones that it, are necessary to send off the emergency broadcast. Yeah, so it, what happens is it hears that broadcast on a different frequency from another station in the region. It then records that uh, broadcast, and then it's set up in the audio chain, uh, and the audio chain is, you know, you got your board, you got your, to your transmitter, there's a certain path that the audio follows. So the end deck is uh, right before the transmitter. So the end deck can take over whatever's happening on the air. It doesn't matter which microphones are turned on, what the sources are playing, the end deck's right before the transmitter, so when it cuts in, it's, it you know, literally does cut in onto the air and plays that message. So it's a, you, know, you can't just go and buy an index and set that system up for yourself. So the answer is maybe, and I don't know how, where you would start to look for something like that. Just get a board, pot it up, and get on your mic and talk to, uh, talk to people about what's happening. I had an idea, I don't know if I'm just talking out my butt here, or if I might actually be onto something, I'm not familiar enough with it. But Basically, would it be possible to record like a test of, I'm assuming that the tone is like kind of similar to like a fax machine signal from what you just described. So basically that forces it to cut in. So would it be possible to record that from a radio of a test and then use that to break into the system? No. Um Unless you have the, the proper equipment, those tones aren't going to do you any good. So if you don't have a, an index machine and you're not a you know, licensed radio station, this is not even an option for you. I'm sorry if I wasn't uh, clear with that earlier. You'd have to, if you wanted to break into a signal, you would have to design your own system from scratch that I know of. And you know, I could, I, I'm no expert on that. So uh, you know, feel free to do the research on your own. See what you can dig up. Any other questions about two-way communications uh, as an activist? You know, what are the options? How can uh, how can they be useful? 
what are your experiences? Have you tried this where, uh, where you are? Or again, broadcast two way. If not, I can wrap up the discussion and get back to work. Thank you all for your uh, work on some radio programming stuff. So, you know, if there's a question I think of later, feel free to approach me. Also, Steve Z's still hanging out here as well, and he is a uh, technical wizard, usually happy to help with uh, the questions. Thank you. Woo!